We are now going to learn how to conduct a one-way chi-square test using SPSS. The data set that we'll be using is buildingpermit.sav, and it contains house building permits for 70 little pigs. The pigs have preferences for the type of material that they use in building their houses, straw, sticks, or brick and mortar. And our question is, are the housing materials preferred equally? So fire up SPSS and get buildingpermit.sav ready to go. I want to point out a few things about this data set. First of all, if you go to variable view, you'll notice that we have one nominal and one scale variable. The scale variable is actually a number of counts, and we're going to need to address that here in a moment. We see one variable is called material. It's type of building material, straw, sticks, brick and mortar. And the permits is the number of permits issued, which is a count. If we go to data view, we see it's a very small data set. Material type 1, 2, and 3, permits 16, 21, 33. We cannot run any kind of test with these values because we don't have means. There's nothing that can be averaged. These are counts, and so we have to let SPSS know how to treat these scale data. What we're going to do is weight the cases by the counts. So go to Data, not the Analyze menu, go to Data, Weight Cases, and you'll see this dialog box. What we are going to do is weight the cases by permits. So move the scale level variable, or what is really the count, into that box and click OK. From now on, any analysis that we run is going to weight that analysis by the number of cases. So now we are ready to conduct a chi-square. There are different ways that chi-square can be conducted. Let me show you the, the most straightforward way for learning it. And uh, I'll tell you there are some other options as well. But we're going to start with this one. Go to the Analyze menu. Analyze, toward the bottom, Non-Parametric Tests, Legacy Dialog, Chi-Square. You'll get a dialog box that looks about like this. Now, the way that we run this Chi-Square is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We're going to simply move Building Material into the Test Variable List box. Having done that, click on Options choose Descriptive, and then Continue, and OK. As we look at the results, what we'll see is that, first of all, we get those descriptive statistics that we looked for. We get a, an N, a sample size of 70, and we also get the minimum and maximum values. Let me tell you what these numbers are useful for. Number one, check these data to make sure they are what you expect them to be. We thought there would be 70 permits. There were, so the N is correct. The mean and standard deviation are useless. They are meaningless because this is nominal data. It doesn't tell us anything. We just ignore those. But the minimum and maximum, those allow us to check for correct data entry. So let's say that the minimum was 1 and the maximum was 33. That meant we have some kind of data entry error somewhere. We'd want to go back and check our data and make sure that it is as it should be. Now, as we scroll down, we get to building materials. We see straw, sticks, brick and mortar, the observed N, and the expected N. Notice how the expected N of 23.3 is the same for all. This means we're using an assumption of randomness where all of the expected values are the same. The residual is just the O minus E value. Under test statistics, we see the chi-square and the asymptotic significance, which is 0 0.038. That is the value that we're looking for to determine whether it is smaller than 0 0.05. And it is, so this test is statistically significant. We also see this note. It says that zero cells have expected frequencies less than five. That refers back to the note that I made earlier. We want to have at least 80% of our cells with expected values greater than 5. And in fact, that is what we find. So that is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to see. So now let's run another chi-square, but give it a bit of a twist. 
We also find that the bears are pulling building permits for their houses. And we find that the bears have a certain pattern in the way that they pull their, their uh, patterns. Uh, we find that their values are 20, 20, and 30. Now we want to know if this pattern is different than what we see with the pigs. Now the bears pattern represents raw values as well. So we've pulled a total of 70 permits for the bears, 70 for the pigs. We're comparing straight numbers in this case. We want to know, are the outcomes different for the pigs than they were for the pattern we just learned about from the bears? So let's go back to SPSS, analyze, non-parametric tests, legacy dialog, chi-square. The setup is exactly the same, only this time we want to change the expected values. Instead of all categories equal, click on the radio button next to the word values. And let's start entering the values 20, 20, and 30. So enter 20, click add, another 20, click add, 30, click add. Now we see that little column with 20, 20, and 30. Those will be the expected values for, for categories 1, 2, and 3. Now click on options. We still have descriptive statistics checked. That's what we want. Click continue and OK. Again, the descriptive statistics tell us some useful information for data checking, but not so much for interpretation. So we have 70 building permits, minimum and maximum are 1 and 3, good. The mean and standard deviation, still meaningless. But as we look down at the building material box, we see that the expected values are different than they were in our previous example. They are now 20, 20, and 30. Those were the values we entered in the previous step. The residuals are still O minus E, or the observed value minus the expected value. In the chi-square box, we see the chi-square is 1.15, the significance 0.563, rather, and that is greater than 0 0.05. Still good news with our expected frequencies being greater than 5. So we know that this test was not statistically significant. But there's still one more trick that I want to show you. This is the really easy way to do a chi-square. Keeping the same data set open, go to Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, One Sample. Here's what you see. Automatically compare observed data to hypothesized. Don't do anything, just click Run. And here's what we get. It even tells us the decision. That 0 0.038 matches what we saw in our first example using these data, and even tells you to reject the null hypothesis. So yes, really easy, but you have to know what you're doing with chi-square for this to make sense. So not a good way to learn about chi-square, but it is nice to know that this option exists so that when you're ready to do a chi-square in the real world, you have an easy way of getting it done.